What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another King Jace video and today I want to give you guys five very important tips for beginner film photographers. Now, when I first started shooting film, there was already tons of information on film photography, but there were never little tips and tricks that really help out in real life situations. And so I wanna give that off to you guys. I've compiled a list of five very important things that you need to know when you're first starting out to shoot film. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Number one, do not get your film developed at a drugstore. When I'm talking about a drugstore, I'm talking about Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, anything of that nature. And the reason for that is because those places don't do it in-house anymore. Back then, you could walk into a CVS, throw your film at them, pay for it, and in an hour, they will develop it in-house, give you back your prints and negatives, and you'll be on your way. But ever since that digital age came, a lot of these stores went whew, and took out all of their in-house film developing. And so what they'll do is, when you bring your film into a Walmart, for example, the worker or the clerk will go ahead and process your order, and then they will take your roll of film and ship it out to a factory that does mass developing. And they don't pay any careful attention to your film. So the photos you took of your first child can definitely get lost or messed up. And I've seen tons and tons of people come up to me and say, I get my film developed at Walmart and I see a bunch of scratches or I see a bunch of dust on here. You know, why is that? And it's because they don't really care about your film. They want your money. The quality that you get out of them is not gonna be great. The worst part is this process takes about two to three weeks. The alternative is to send your film over to a professional film developing lab. My personal favorite film developing lab is the Darkroom Lab. And I send all of my bigger projects over to them. So if I have like 20 rolls of film that I need to get developed, it's sent over to the Darkroom Lab. I trust them completely and I've used them ever since I started shooting film and not one time have I ever had a bad experience. The Darkroom Lab makes it simple for you as well. All you gotta do is go to thedarkroomlab.com, place your order, then go ahead and print out that shipping label or you can go ahead and request a mailer to be sent to you. Send it out to them and they'll do the rest of the work. One of the best things about them is that it only takes about five to seven days at a time to get your film developed and scanned. And they also upload it to their online gallery for you to download instantly right after your order is processed. So no more waiting two to three weeks for crappy results. Send your film over to the Darkroom Lab, give them about a week, they will process your film professionally and you will get your scans back immediately. Number two, shoot primes, not zooms. Now, prime lenses, if you guys didn't know, are lenses that are stuck at one focal length. Prime lenses come in all different focal lengths. They make a 24, 28, a 35, 50, 85, 90, you name it. You can find a bunch of prime lenses out there. The first advantage of a prime lens over a zoom is the form factor. You guys can see these prime lenses are generally typically smaller than a zoom. And so that means you're gonna be able to take your camera to more places and that'll mean you're gonna take better pictures and overall it'll improve your photography. Now, because you're stuck at one focal length, you don't have that luxury to zoom in and out. And this is gonna make you work as a photographer. The biggest advantage of a prime lens over a zoom lens though, is that these things are noticeably sharper than a zoom lens. Also, prime lenses have larger apertures. This one is a 50 millimeter 1.8. Some prime lenses go down to 1.4, 1 1.2, and I've even seen a prime lens that goes to like 0.95, which is insane. Now, aperture is the diaphragm inside of the lens that allows light to come in. And so with a larger aperture, you can shoot more low light photography. Maybe you want to take some night portraits or maybe you're out in the dark trying to shoot some street photography. Get a prime lens with a big aperture and you'll be set. Also, larger apertures will allow you to get that nice bokeh. But if you like that creamy shallow depth of field, what I'm talking about is that background blur that you see in portraits. Get a prime lens with a larger aperture and you will be satisfied. Number three store your film in the fridge. Now you guys might be thinking, whoa, JP, you are crazy, man. Why would you wanna store your film in the fridge? But if you ask any film photographer that's been doing this for a while, they're pretty much gonna tell you the same thing. Store your film in the fridge. Now, before you go all wacky on me, the reasoning behind this is simple. That film strip that we see protruding out of the film roll has an emulsion on it, and that's what captures the light. Over time, that film emulsion will lose its sensitivity to light, and that's where that expiration date comes into play. The longer the film sits, the faster it is to lose its light sensitivity and expire. That is 
until you store your film in the fridge. When you store your film in the fridge, what'll end up happening, or I should say in a cooler temperature, the film emulsion on there will kind of slow down. It'll slow down its deterioration process, or I'm sorry, not deteriorating, but its light sensitivity loss. And so you can slow this down by putting it in the fridge. So if you want your film to last longer, Throw your film in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the fridge, and forget about it. Number four, buy expired film. You can save a ton of money by simply buying expired film. Do a quick search on eBay and you can find stuff like this. I found eight rolls of Fuji Superior 400 for $3. $3, you guys, eight rolls, and this is gonna last me a while. Now, like we stated in the last tip, storing your film in the fridge will help it last longer. So when you're going out to buy expired film, make sure to ask how the film was stored or maybe observe how it's stored. If it's at a Walmart or if it's at a store and it's on expired, but it's on the clearance rack, you know, if that Walmart is generally a much cooler Walmart, buy the film. There's a chance that it's still good. Keep in mind though, that any film that expires within that first year will generally still be fresh. Anything past three to four years, you're gonna kinda wanna keep that in mind. And anything definitely past five years, uh, you wanna make sure that it was store cold. And also anything past five years, you're gonna wanna compensate for that light loss. And so if you guys wanna see how to shoot expired film, definitely hit that subscribe button because that's one of the future videos that I wanna do pretty soon. Save some money folks, go on eBay, go on a hunt, get yourself some expired film and have fun. Last but not least, number five, have fun with film. Film is a medium overshadowed by digital and not a lot of people do it anymore. And overall, if you aspire to be a good photographer, film will teach you a lot of things digital can't teach you. One of them being to limit yourself to a number of shots per roll. And so you really have to hone in and focus and slow yourself down because you don't want to waste your film. It's a beautiful experience that should be enjoyed. So once you buy your camera, once you buy a lens and buy some film, go out there, go on road trips, go to different places, bring your camera with you ever and capture your world on film. Sad fact is film was a dying art form, but with the resurgence of it, you're starting to see a lot of people, a younger generation like me, millennials, pick up a film camera and start shooting. Remember folks, positive vibes, and film. So that's gonna wrap it up you guys. I hope you enjoyed the five very important tips beginner film photographers should know. If you guys have any tips that you feel like I left out and you wanna contribute, leave a comment down below and let us know exactly what's on your mind. I try to respond to your comments as soon as I can and I appreciate all the love in the comment section, especially for the Minolta gang. By the way, we're almost to 10K and I don't know, I'm feeling weird. There's like this giveaway feeling coming soon. So if you guys aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below, drop a comment, drop a like, and thank you guys for watching another King James video. As always, Minolta Gang.